I had to keep praying about this. I kept asking the Lord, Lord, do you really want me to do this? Do you really want me to say these things? And he's the one that gave it to me. If there was ever a time in the history of mankind that the word of God, the entire word of God, has needed to be preached and taught, it is now. We are in the last days and time is running out. But there seems to be a sickness in the church, a plague infecting the pulpit. Pastors, preachers, rabbis, and church leaders are not leading, nor are they feeding their flocks what is needed to be able to deal with what is to come. So why are pastors afraid to teach the word of God and only teach what the people want to hear? 2 Timothy 4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate to themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. That's happening now. It's been going on, but never like it is now. Joe McKeever, uh, he is a, he's been a writer and a preacher, and he's been preaching the gospel for over 55 years. And in a recent article he wrote, this is just part of his article, many a pastor has figured out what sells and has determined to offer a steady menu of that to their congregations. This is powered by a lot of things, personal ambition, job security, drawing crowds, increasing the budget, and getting noticed. The flesh craves what it wants. The gospel, the gospel of ear tickling says pastors should speak nice words, never rock the boat, and choose only those doctrines that the locals agree on or even better, avoid doctrine altogether and stay with topics sure to draw in a crowd. Like how to be a winner in, lose, in a losing world, how to overcome your low self-esteem, how to be popular and still please God, how to romance your spouse, how to have perfect children. They are supposed to be leaders doing the Lord's work led by God and not by man. They are afraid to offend, even though Paul told Timothy that at times the word of God will offend. And let me say right now, the reason you are here is because you know we're not afraid to offend. For those who have ears, They don't want to speak the truth because some don't want to hear the truth. They want to be stroked and pampered or they will leave. The majority of pastors judge their success on the number of seats they fill, the amount of money, of course, that's brought in, and believe it or not, the amount of square footage they occupy. Acts 20, 28 says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the, which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. These people, us, have made a covenant with God to preach his word. There are many pastors out there today who have broke that covenant. Now I'm not, let me say right off, we're not perfect. 
We don't do everything right, but we try. And we're not afraid to speak the truth. Every leader in this congregation is not afraid to stand up and speak the truth. And we're not afraid to speak God's word, all of God's word. They are teaching the flock what they want to hear and not what they need to hear. Therefore, they are not truly doing God's work. Jeremiah 10, 21 says, For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Jeremiah 12, 10, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. And Jeremiah 23, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Now these are supposed to be learned men. They don't read that. They haven't read that. A research study was done not long ago. Pastors were asked about the key political issues of the day. 90% agreed that the Bible scriptures address every one of the issues. Yet only 10% say they were teaching on what the Bible said about those issues. People had questions during the turmoil, tor turmoil of the last couple years and have asked Rabbi a lot of questions. They've asked us all questions. The answers to those questions are in God's word if you seek it out. Can you believe only 10% of pastors and preachers out there were turning to the Bible to explain what is going on to their congregants? They need to stand up and take a stand and explain what is happening in the world as it relates to God's word. You know, the days of political correctness are over. We need biblical correctness. For instance, there has been spatterings out there of people on the internet and just people all around stating that Whoa, don't take the vaccine. Don't get the vaccine. It's the mark of the beast. Don't do that. Don't take it. Well, first of all, you cannot just get the mark of the beast. They can't just give it to you. It has to be a conscience, conscient choice for you to take the mark of the beast. Scripture tells us that. So that debunks that whole theory right off the bat. But how many people look to, strip, to Scripture to have it explained to them? We talk about raising up our children, that they will be our next leaders. We do that all the time. We bless our children. There's a lot of, a, a lot of churches out there today that never bless their children. They just send them off a little school. They're not even mentioned. We bless our children, and we say these are our next leaders. But how can that happen when they're not being taught the Word of God? They're taught all these other little programs and everything else, but they're not learning the Word. I can remember growing up, Bible school and, and Sunday school that we were down in our little room hunkered down doing things about God, learning about God and ever so often they would let us out early so we could go up and sit with our parents and listen to the message. Not that we understood it but we could sit with them. In order for our children to be leaders they have to have a firm foundation to start on and they're not getting that. 
When I was growing up, we didn't have jungle gyms and slides and all this going on. We didn't have soccer teams and baseball teams and football teams. We went to church and learned about God. That was it. Not today. Not today. New pastors are being taught the same old ways. Not understanding the word because they are not taught the entire word. There are new pastors coming out every day. Going to Bible college, but not really learning the entire word. So how can they be prepared to shepherd a flock if they don't know the word? Some of them never even read the Old Testament. 1 Timothy 1.6 From which some have served have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Pastors are getting fed on their own success while their flock is starving for the truth. They sell their books, push their programs, but their messages are empty and leave their congregation starving. They are leaving their congregation unprepared for the Lord's return and leaving them to fall prey to the ways of the world instead of instilling the kingdom concept. Jeremiah 50, my people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. So why are these pastors not teaching the word? They're afraid of losing congregants. There's people out there that don't want to hear the word. They want to be stroked. They teach what they, the people want to hear, not what they need to hear. What would you do if you were a pastor and a few of your congregants, let's say the big tithers, come up and tell you they don't like what you've been preaching the last few weeks, and if you continue, we're going to leave. What do you think the pastor would think? Most of them would cow down. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, ta I'll tame things down a little. They need to stand up and say, I'm preaching the word of God. If you leave, you leave. They don't understand. They don't understand that God will take care. God will take care of your needs. If you're doing his work, he will take care of you. We have never worried here about people who have left. I don't care if they were big tithers or they didn't tithe at all. If they got an attitude and left, Bye-bye. I hope you find greener pastures. But it didn't stop us from preaching the word. It didn't stop us from what we had to do. It didn't make us stop and think, well, maybe we should change something. No. You know, they need to be fed, whether they know it or not. And most of the times they don't. <laughs> Until they hear it, and it hits, and it sticks. Pastors have to quit feeding people snacks. You can get by with it with the kids. You can give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and that's fine. But for the adults, they need a meal. They can't survive on snacks. They need a dinner. Every Sunday, they need a dinner. 
They need to be able to chew on the word. If the pastors and teachers have lost the desire to shepherd and truly serve the Lord and have turned to the ways of the world, then they should step aside and step down or seek guidance and forgiveness from the Lord and be the shepherd once again who will feed and lead the flock with God's word of truth. Elder Ralph and I were talking earlier, and I wasn't going to say it because it sounds like it's nitpicky, but when you think about it, it's not. I can't stand the whole seeker-friendly seeker situation we've been in for a long time. I don't like to see a pastor or preacher walk up to the Bema looking like he just came off the golf course. I don't like to see a pastor, a supposed leader, standing there in a golf shirt and khaki pants and preach the word. Now, I know it doesn't really make any difference, but it does. They are supposed to be a leader. They are supposed to look authoritative. I am an authority on God's word and preach it. You can't look like Joe Blow coming off the street and stand up there and try to teach the word to people. Sure, you, wanna, you want them to feel like you're one of them, and you are. But then again, you're not. You're a leader. You're a teacher of God's word. You should present yourself that way. Yeah, told you I wasn't going to, but I did anyway. And I know it doesn't matter, but it does in a sense. You have to, you have to show some authority Rabbi Allen has never, never refused to listen to congregants who have had a beef or, or want to talk about a message that he has given or whatever, but he never backs away from preaching that message. He will never do that. None of us will ever do that because it's in the book. It's God's word, and that's what we're supposed to be here for is to teach it and preach it and hope that you take it and study it, and think about it. James 3 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. I thought about that. I thought about that before I was made pastor. Oh, oh, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. So are these pastors reading that? Have they read James 3, 1? Do they know that God is watching them? Do they know they're going to be judged very harshly? Not for all that they said, but for what they didn't say. I take that scripture to heart, as all should do. In the end, I want to hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So you are listening to this, some online are listening. I hope, in a way, I haven't offended the men of the cloth that are out there. But if I have offended you, then you know you're the ones I'm talking about. And I don't do this with malice. I do this with love because 
you made a covenant with the Lord to preach the word of God. And you're not doing it. You're not feeding your flock. You're losing your flock. You're not shepherding. You need to stand up and start preaching the word no matter what anybody tells you. The word does offend at times. And it has to. But to me, not teaching the word is more offensive. The word of truth must be preached and taught now before it is too late and the flocks are lost to the wilderness. Meat to the wolves. We understand, we know that church is a business. It is a big business now. I got out of the music business a long time ago because I couldn't stand the business anymore. It wasn't the rehearsals. It wasn't playing the jobs. It was the business end that drove me away from it. And to be honest with you, recently, I have really felt like getting out of the church business. Because it's not about preaching the word anymore. It's about everything else. It's about creating all these programs so the community comes in. Well, what does that bring in? Brings in more money. Here we go with the mighty dollar again. We here judge success not by the number of people we have, but the knowledge that we give them to those who are here and to those of you out there. That's success. When we hear someone come up to us later and said, I never thought of that, thank you for sharing that, or wow, you've really opened my eyes, I didn't see that before, that makes you feel good. That makes you know that you did what you were here to do. And that's not to say we don't get comments. And we do. But we continue on. Pastors have to start preaching the entire word. Old Testament, New Testament. They have to talk about that Jewish stuff. Because that's part of scripture. You're right. That's where it did. That's where Christianity started. Well, I don't want to hear any of that Hebraic stuff. But yet, those are the people that influence the pastors. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear none of that stuff. I just want to come in here for 15 minutes and hear you give me a message that really doesn't excite me or make me think or do anything and go home and watch the ball game. I don't think we've ever had a service here that didn't last under an hour. <laughs> it takes time. It takes time to praise and worship the Lord, which we should do constantly. But that's another thing these pastors do too. They rely on this big extravaganza, the big show. For those of you who remember Ed Sullivan, the big shoe. That's the big draw. They'll draw the people in, which is great. But what do you do after you get those people in? You're going to fill them with fluff? 
or you're going to give, give them meat. Rabbi always says that. We serve meat here. We try to. Not all our messages are, are hit you in the face messages. But in the times we are now, it seems like most of our messages have been that way. Why? Because we wouldn't be doing our duty if we didn't. Pastors, preachers, rabbis, they need to start preparing their congregation now for what is to come. And I hate to say it, but it's true. For some, it's too late. They're never going to wake up. And as a pastor, you hate to see that. You, have to, you try to figure out a way to reach someone. But that can't stop you from continuing to try. And that's what we're all supposed to do. We're all supposed to continue to preach the word until his return. We don't feel defeated because we haven't reached people. We have to continue to spread the word as much as we can. Tell them about the glory to come. Tell them about the kingdom that awaits them. It's just like we've talked about before, someone on their deathbed. Finally, finally claims Yeshua as their Lord and Savior. It wasn't too late for them. They're not going to have much to show for it, but they're saved. The other thing that seems to continually happen is a lot of these churches will bring people in and they're saved, but what do they do after they're saved? They let them walk out the door, go back out into the world without any knowledge, any wisdom. Being saved is just the beginning. Once again, you have to feed the flock. And they're not doing it, plain and simple. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good pastors out there. There's a lot of good preachers out there that are preaching the word. And they need to start talking to their fellow pastors and preachers. You nudge them. Hey, you got to start picking it up. Time's short. Just as, just as a... Uh, Just a little experiment. Last Sunday, I started clicking through the internet and was trying to find as many church services as I could, just a little research. And I think I came, I think there was like 11 or 12 that I just clicked on for a little bit. And I bypassed all the worship and everything else because that took up most of the, the whole time anyway. Most of the messages that were given ran 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes to give the word of God and to teach you the word of God and to enlighten you. 15 minutes. The rest of it was all announcements and so-called praise and worship. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. Chew as you're walking out the door. And the messages I can't begin 
to describe. I have never seen so much fluff, even at the biggest Dairy Queen. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Pastor, after your sermon, when you go home, do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel like you've really touched someone? Do you feel like you've really taught them the word of God? And some of them probably do. I didn't get anything out of any of the messages that I listened to. All except one. Let me take that back. All except one. Even though it was only about 20 minutes long. Pastors, rabbis, preachers, they need to step it up. They need to start preaching God's word and not be afraid of the consequences. You know, the other day I was talking to a rabbi and I mentioned to him, I thought the other day, I said, you know, I thought the other day, how many of the kids growing up right now know what, know what the rainbow represents? How many of them look at the rainbow and how many really know what the rainbow represents? I remember growing up, loved to see rainbows. Now, I really don't even, I can't stand looking at one because of what it represents now. So how many of the kids know that that was a promise from God to us, but more so, it was a reminder to him that he will not end the earth by a flood again? How many kids know that? I dare to say hardly any. You see a rainbow now, and it represents something totally opposite of God's word. As a matter of fact, it's a mockery to the word of God. Have you ever thought of that? It's a total mockery of God's word, what they have taken, a symbol, a symbol of love and peace and have turned it around to represent sin. And we'll probably hear about that now. Bring it on. <laughs> it's okay. The people aren't prepared. The kids aren't prepared. So what do you do? You keep trying to preach the word and hope somebody hears it. You hope whoever does hear it spreads it to someone else. Because that's the only way we're going to reach people. I don't know how many people we reach usually on, on, on our broadcast. Pastor Greg, not as many as we should, but maybe 20. Every Shabbat, we usually have a small group. Most of the time, it's mostly the leaders that are here <laughs> preaching to each other. Shabbats are good. Shabbats are good. But like Rabbi says, and we all know, it's not the quantity. It's the quality of people we have here. I'll put the people that come here regularly up against anybody as far as knowledge of God's word. Why? Because they've been taught it. So in closing, I'm not here to lambaste all these pastors and preachers. I'm here to call them out and ask them to please, to please step it up. Start preaching the word of God. That's what you signed up for. You signed up to shepherd your flock, and you're failing miserably. Your flock will perish. 
You have thrown them to the wolves. You have cowed down to the big money people. You have cowed down to the ones who don't want to hear the truth of God's word. So I ask you now out there to pray about it. To pray, ask for forgiveness. Ask for more wisdom and more knowledge. And open the book and read it. And then share it. Amen?